your first time here if you could stand up with us right now today we just want to recognize you you don't have to say anything do we have any visitors in the house any visitors no so we're all family well let's oh, we do stand up welcome we welcome you everybody say welcome. welcome welcome we welcome you hi i see you in the back welcome listen but stand up because our ushers are going to bring you a nice token they're just going to bring something for you okay all right, church, family, we're going to get ready to sing and serenade our guests. I love you all, and I'm so happy that you came out this morning to praise and worship with us. All right, stand up. Are we ready? Give God a hand clap of praise, everyone. Anybody be glad in the service? Got to be in the service? Glad to be in the service? Amen. Praise God. This is prayer time. We pray that you will join with us as we prepare our hearts for prayer. On the screen, there's names listed for those who are sick, shut in, those who desire prayer. We encourage all of us to be mindful, to pray for one another, and to make it known if you stand in need of prayer. In one way in which we express our form of worship and connection and relationship is that we pray for one another and wherever the case is you don't need to know the details but we need to go to God in prayer we pray that you will join with us as we whisper a prayer father God we thank you today for your grace and for your mercy and for your kindness that you continue to extend to us and I pray Lord God today on the behalf of those who stand in need of prayer those names that are strolling on the screen, Lord God, you know all of their cases and details, and you know what they stand in need of. Now, I pray, Lord God, as we come to intercede on the behalf of them and to stand in the gap for them, that you likewise will give us the spirit, the mind, the power, the will to continue to labor and pray for them. I pray for those who are serving the sick and shedding, that you give them the grace and the strength they need to endure and to care for those loved ones that may be sick. We pray for bereaved families right now. We pray, Lord God, for marriages. We pray for homes. We pray for our schools. We pray, Lord God, for our government. I pray, Lord God, around this world that we will take our place as your people to operate in the gift and grace you have given us to take it to you in prayer. Lord God, you told us in, our, in your word, if we cast our cares upon you, for you are the one who cares for us. 
Lord God, today lift the burden. Lord God, give us the grace we need. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord God, that you would do what only you can do. I pray, Lord God, that we don't get so distracted that we continue to make things happen. You are in control and you have all power in your hand. Teach us to trust you, to operate in faith, to grow and to, Lord God, see what you're doing in the midst of us right now. Thank you for this moment to remind us when it gets too much for our hands that you are faithful and just to bless your people. It's in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that you would show up mightily today. We thank you for our young people who is singing the songs of praise. I thank you, Lord God, for families and those who are training their children to learn who you are and to serve you with gladness. Let the joy of these children open our hearts and remind us again to be like child, like children in faith, to come to you. In the name of Jesus, have your way today. In the name of Jesus, let us see your glory today. In the name of Jesus, let us feel your spirit today. In the name of Jesus, let us celebrate our salvation. This we pray in your darling son Jesus' name. Everyone who believed, said, amen, amen. At this time now, please turn your attention to our screens. We have some announcements for you. Hello, good morning, and these are your church announcements. Tune in on Facebook Weekly at 11 a.m. Monday Morning Moments with Pastor Tillman. See flyer for details. Here at FBCPG, we take great pride in being a place of worship for all. Our Connecting Hearts and Souls Effectively, also known as Chase Ministry, is gearing up to serve our children and youth during worship service with special needs. All parents and guardians must complete the registration form in order for your child to participate. Please see a Chase member in the Fellowship Hall to register. The FBCPG Children and Youth Ministry presents Fuel Sundays, Faith Used in Everyday Life. See flyer for details. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Woman of Class presents Mess. A look at the women in the Bible, their mess, and God's message. Join us on April 27th for a fun fellowship as we look at the real housewives of Abraham. Please see the woman of class table in the lobby to register. FBCPG Children and Youth Ministry presents fun fellowship at Round 1 Arcade in Bowling for ages 9 and up. The last day to register will be April 26th as transportation will be provided for registered participants only. Parents, if you wish to register your children, please see a representative in the lobby today after each service. The Society of Missions is inviting ladies to join the Circle Anna group in April. Circle Anna helps with the community outreach, teaching, and servicing our church. For more information, please call church office and leave a message for Miss Emma Sampson. Also, the Society of Missions will be restocking our food pantry. We are asking the church family to donate two cans of vegetables or meat every fourth Sunday. The containers for collection will be in the foyer. We want to encourage all men to join the Brotherhood on the second Saturdays at 9 a.m. with the word being taught by our pastor. The dance ministry is looking for dance leaders, choreographers, as well as dancers. If you have a desire and or experience to minister and dance, please see Sister Terrell Hall or contact the church office. If you have been a member of First Baptist Church Piney Grove for 50 consecutive years, please call the church office at 954-735-1500 on or before April 30th so that we can add your name to our pioneers list. If you are a new pioneer or if you have changed your mailing address, please contact the church office. Thank you to those who have pledged and donated to the 700 Debt Free Campaign. In order to reach the goal, we need everyone to participate. Please use the 700 Debt Free Campaign green envelope to make your contribution, or you can see a member of the campaign in the lobby. Our church conference has moved from Thursday, April 4th, 2024, to Thursday, May 2nd, 2024, at 7 p.m. On Friday, May 10th, Relay for Life will be celebrating their annual Survivor's Life Walk. This will be held at Joseph C. Carter Park from 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. See flyer for details. On Saturday, May 11th, 2024, at 10 a.m., 
We are asking all members, male and female, to come out and help clean the church. Refreshments will be served. On May 22nd at 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., Piney Grove Academy will be having its annual Rites of Passage celebration known as the Battalion for Boys and Chinsaga for Girls. You can buy tickets via Evenbrite and or they can be purchased in the lobby. Save the date! April 28, 2024, our closet corner will be open. Clothes will be given away. On Wednesday, May 15th at 7 p.m., church mortgage burning celebration will be happening. Saturday, May 18th, church cookout on the grounds. Sunday, May 19th, church annual celebration. These are your church announcements and have a blessed weekend. Yeah, this slide about to go crazy. Hold up. Best slide ever. Yo. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, let's go. Oh, y'all, what's up? What's up? Hey, hey, hey. Wait, does anybody know what today is? No. It's today. What? It's 30 days until the mortgage burning ceremony. I have to go tell everybody. Oh. Mr. Ron, do you know what today is? No, what today? Do you know what today is? It's 30 days until the mortgage burning ceremony! What? Oh my gosh! Do you know what today is? No. What is it? Do you know what today is? No. It's 30 days until the mortgage burning ceremony! <laughs> Wait! We saved the best for last. We forgot to invite you! Join us on May 15th, right here at the Grove for our mortgage burning ceremony. Our special guests will be Dr. Marcus Davison and New Mount Olive Baptist Church. We can't wait to see you here on May 15th at 7 p.m. Don't forget them shouting shoes. And amen, amen. Give it up, give it up, give it up. We are blessed and excited what God is doing and what he's in the midst of doing. And we pray that you will continue to support our efforts to move our church forward to do greater uh, things than this. Um, as was stated on last Sunday that we know we have a second leg of our project to go with uh, doing a hard task of fixing our roof or redoing the roof has been over, I think, close to 17 years, I believe, since the last improvements were made. So we're going to need your support. And to all those who have made your contributions, and as listed last week for those who have still a standing balance, we thank you for continuing to support us. And we are looking each week, as God has touched your heart, to give and support over and beyond your tithes and offering to help us to do this large job because together we're better. Amen? Yeah. And we can do it if we stick with our task. Amen. Amen. At this time, there will be a special announcement to come that will share with us from the Chase Ministry. If you're here, amen. amen. Give her a hand as she come. <laughs> amen. Thank you, Sister April. Good morning again. My name is April Callwood to Pastor Tillman, Lady Tillman in her absence, in church family. April is Autism Awareness Month. The recognition raises awareness about autism acceptance and, pro and promotes inclusion and connectedness for people with autism. Here at First Baptist Church, Piney Grove, we're dedicated to inclusion for everyone, more specifically our children. Chase Ministry is ready to lead the cause. We are here, ready to welcome your children to a safe place that will provide high interest activities designed to engage your children for a unique worship experience. If you're a parent, guardian, loved one, supporter of a child with special needs, please stop by the Chase table after second service. Thank you, have a great day. Amen. It's giving time. You know, I, I try my best to make sure that you put emphasis where they belong. And uh, sometimes God's people don't know when to shout. Amen. This is the area in space where anybody can be blessed. Because this is a way of blessing. When we come to worship, God is not only with our mouths. 
We come to give sacrifice. We come to give praise. We come to give acknowledgement to who God is. And in doing so, in giving a portion of what God has given to us, is acknowledging who is Lord of our life and who our provider is. Anybody know who your provider is? Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. And in provision, God tests our heart and our stewardship and our trust. It's like anything else in your house. If you're going to have anything, you have to learn how to take care of it. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And so in doing so, when we give to God, we acknowledge what God makes important to him. And his church matters to him. And the church should matter to you. Amen. So during this time now, we ask that you would be faithful in your tithes and offering and to bring them as you prepare your heart and you contemplate, the Bible says, as a man has purpose in his heart, as a woman has purpose in her heart, as a believer has purpose in their heart, so shall they give. So I pray that you just don't think now, but it should be on your mind before you got here, I'm going to come and to give my blessing because I've received a blessing. Amen. Amen. At this time, now the ushers on the floor, they have envelopes and whatever you may need, they will make that provision for you. We ask that you would join this time as we come to give our offering. Let me whisper a prayer and be on our way. Father God, thank you in advance for the faithfulness of your people. We thank you, Lord God, as you have shown us and in the midst of showing us of how you open doors that we cannot close, that you bring great and mighty things before us as we be faithful for the task you have set before us. Bless each home, each giver, each person as we bring our worship because our giving is worship as we honor your son, Jesus Christ. Bless this time, bless the offering. In Jesus' name we pray. And all those who believe said, Amen. Amen. Follow the usher instruction this time. Amen. It's so the choir. Bring us a good selection. Good, mo good morning. There's revival and it's spreading. Like a wildfire in my heart Sunday morning, hallelujah And it's lasting all week long Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's a rhythm of a gospel song Once you choose it, you can lose it Cause there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my soul
gonna steal my
Hallelujah. Zyra, you are enough. I want to call your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The reading you're hearing, short verse. Specifically in verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. And when you have it, say amen. Amen. And there you'll find these words recorded. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. God bless you. We want to share from this thought by the grace of God. Amen. You may be seated by the grace of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this worship experience. Thank you, Lord God, for what our hearts have felt. We pray that you will open our ears now to hear and our hearts to receive this uncorruptible seed. Today, we believe this place today acknowledging your grace. Pray, Lord God, that you would speak to us as only you can. Encourage, strengthen, and deliver. That someone will come saying, what must I do to be saved? For this is our purpose and passion for preaching in Jesus' name. And all those who believed said, Amen. By the grace of God. These words are recorded by familiar gospel singer, and many of us utter these words often in hearing it as it played on our radios. He saw the best in me. When everyone else around me could only see the worst in me. He saw the best in me. These words, brothers and sisters, utters a truth and a picture about our lives, about our personhood, about our identity. For be it if you are saved or sinner, we praise God that he saw the best in us. When everyone else around us could only see the worst in us. This perception reminds us of the myths and the struggle that many people have in their lives, be it knowingly or unknowingly. We are oftentimes uncomfortable in the skin that we're in. Uh, Many of us, brothers and sisters, struggle privately because in our own minds, in our own hearts, based upon our experiences, we struggle with how do we feel about ourselves? Do we appreciate ourselves? Do we celebrate the uniqueness of God in which have made each and every one of us who we are distinctively? How often do we struggle silently and privately because we're wishing to be like our peers? We're wishing to live our life out as our TV personalities. We're trying to make our life and dreams contingent upon how we see and view social media influencers. It's one of those things in which many of us always strive to be better, to have more, to have more comforts and privileges. However, uh, many of us must wrestle with this point in fact about who we are, that God did not get it wrong with you. Uh, God did not make a mistake with you. Uh, You are only one of a kind. There's no one like you anywhere else in the world. Even twins are distinctive because they have their own handprint. God has made all of us to be who we are by specific design. Uh, Psalms 139 and 14 says this, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. You must be clear within yourself, I am not a mistake. I'm not a hazard. I'm not a myth. I'm not a made up of problem. I'm who God has designed for me to be from the womb to the tomb. 
God permits challenges in all our life, struggles and tests. But those struggle, tests and challenges are designed and assigned to who we are. For many of us who have survived some trauma and drastic things in our life on the ending of the process, we come to acknowledgement of learning it was necessary because those things made us who we are. I want to say this to the young people today who's living in a world of judgment, in a world of peer pressure, and you're watching TikToks and YouTubes and everything else that's shaping a picture of your life. I want you to grow and to learn that you are who God wants you to be. You will be who God wants you to be. And I want y'all to celebrate. I am who God wants me to be. In the midst of this, this is something my father-in-law often say it was funny to us until I got the revelation of it. He would say this all the time. George E. Jones Jr. would say this. He had said, I love me some me. Now, it sounded so arrogant. It sounded prideful. And it sounded as if you were egotistical. But then at the end of the day, if you don't love you, who else going to love you? And you can love who you are when you acknowledge how much God loves you. I heard the word said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe it should not perish but have everlasting life. God showed who we are and how he expressed a gift of love. And if you don't love anything else, love who God says you are. He gave his best for his best. I want us to embrace it today as we consider that many of us in this room do not see ourselves as being masterpieces. We do not see ourselves embracing that God did not make any carbon copies. Embrace it. You ought to love yourself. You ought to celebrate yourself. And you ought to forgive yourself. Here Paul speaks in this passage in the midst of him sharing the importance of the gospel and what reveals about who we are in the gospel. He shares in this, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Help me say that. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Now, now with that being said, I, I think that we should preface that with what does that mean? Because some were here that stated that where you are is all right. And where you are is justified and, and who you are is fine. However, we are in the process of being children through receiving the gospel to know that God is growing us from grace to grace. God is stretching us from faith to faith. God is making us and molding us and shaping us into what we shall be. It's called glorification. You are being sanctified until you become like him. And I think someone in the room may not understand that because we have reached this place that we are satisfied with ourselves. So we make excuses for the worst of us versus striving to be the best of us. And that's the ceiling I want us to reach as a child of God is that every day you wake up don't give up on you tell yourself I'm under construction I have some stuff I'm working on I got some stuff I got to get out of me I got some stuff I have to change and grow with but I'm not gonna give up on me tell your neighbor I'm under construction and understanding that is that at your best sometimes you cannot perfect you but that's what the Holy Ghost does and when you believe by faith who God is, he's doing a work in your life. You have to acknowledge that you can't handle it, you can't fix it, but by faith, I'm becoming what God will have for me to be. And so brothers and sisters, I, I, I like Paul sharing this intimate moment with us because he shares with us. He don't think that much about himself. Because he's struggling with how good God has been to him. Uh, I, 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 I see one of my members back there. I can't call his name right now. But he was sharing me last Sunday. He said, Pastor, he said, every once in a while, I just have to think about all the stuff I've done wrong. But how good God is to me. I can't explain it. I don't know why. I don't deserve it. But I acknowledge God is still good to me. And at the end of the day, many of us, if we think about the grace of God, that's what it is. It is unmerited favor. Tell your neighbor, I'm favored 
in spite of me. I'm favored because of God. I'm favored because he chose me when I didn't choose him. I'm favored by God. I think someone ought to shout right there because you know the worst of you. But God saw the best of you. And when others could only see the worst of you, God gave you more grace. I like the old church. And I, I used, to, used to hear them songs growing up and just sounded good to me uh, until you live long enough to understand it. And it's enough stuff in your life that when you keep on living, you acknowledge God didn't have to do it, but he did. You sing songs like this when growing up in the church. Uh, see what the Lord has done. You ought to see what the Lord has done. Count your many blessings. See what the Lord has done. See, some of y'all ain't, ain't going to help me right here, but let me talk some mind in back. He gave me eyes to see. See what the Lord has done. He gave me legs to walk. See what the Lord has done. He gave me a tongue to talk. See what the Lord has done. You ought to count your many blessings and see what the Lord has done. Well, that don't move you, but when I just consider that those younger than me that could see 2020 vision, but now they blind, I can see what the Lord has done. I got friends and loved ones now that can't hardly walk. I can see what the Lord has done. I have a father sitting on the side of the screen watching right now, can't talk no more. I can see what the Lord has done, and I count my many blessings because I can see what the Lord has done. There's some people here ain't happy about that yet because you think that you talking on your own power. You think you walking on your own volition. You think you have your own mind. But no, it's what the Lord has done. We are who we are by the grace of God. In him we live. We move and have our being. It's because of the grace of God. And if ain't nobody happy about it, I am. I thank God for the small stuff because I'm learning the small stuff is God's stuff. The small stuff is a miracle. The small stuff is his grace in my life. You think it's small, but wake up in the morning, can't see. Wake up in the morning, got no appetite. Wake up in the morning, you can't walk. See what the Lord has done. Tell your neighbor, that's big stuff. That's God's stuff. That's grace stuff. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Thank you, Paul, for sharing us in our Christian walk that you don't give us no superficial view about the experience of being a child of God. That even when we struggle with stuff psychologically and emotionally, we can still fix in the space that God has helped us with our own disclaimers and our own insecurities and our own problems and showing how much he loved us and letting us struggle through that he loved us beyond our imperfections. Here it is. Why it's so important for Paul to share how he feels about the grace of God in his life because Paul acknowledged that I'm now where God has placed me. But I haven't always started here. Here's to the folks in the room who know you ain't been no saint all your life. Those in the room that got a record. Those in the room that still got some enemies ain't forgave you. Those in the room that still got a struggle you're praying about. Those in the room who realize I haven't reached perfection yet. He says to those struggle with it but no God is still working on you. You are who you are. Only by the grace of God. Paul shares after giving this picture of the power and truth about the gospel verses 1 and following before he shifts to his personal confession about where he is in his walk and what it means to him as a personal testimony that he is a grace case. What does that mean about being a grace case? Is that because as he looked at his own life, he sees himself not being worthy 
He see himself as the least of those. He see himself as being one that shouldn't have been qualified. But in spite of what my record says, I'm talking good to myself. In spite of what is guilty about me, in spite of what people think about me and know about me, it don't change who I am. I am what God made me to be. It don't matter how much you talk about me, how much you point fingers, how much you gossip about me. On God's record, I'm still a child of God. So he, he, he gives th this picture about grace because he wrestles with that when I look at Peter and, and I look at, at Thaddeus and I, 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 look at, I look at the rest of these apostles and Matthew and all of them, they, 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 they have a better record than I have. Because that was a time where I hated the church. It, it was a time that I sought out to kill those who loved Jesus. I was on the other polar side of this thing called the church. And because of that, it still bothers me because I was the worst piece or the worst example of what a person could be. And the evil I've done, mentally I can't forgive myself. So it helps me to understand God's grace to help me get over myself. See, there's some people in the room right now that's struggling because within your own mind, you can't forgive you. In your own mind, you feel uncomfortable because of how people look at you because what they know about you. In your own mind, you walk around with a complex because you have a past. But listen, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The only difference in this room is the stuff that folk know about you and the stuff they don't know about you. All of us have sin and come short. All of us got some stuff. All of us have something we're not proud of. So he, he shares that, listen, I'm not trying to boost my own portfolio and I'm not trying to push my title on you. I'm not trying to make you receive me, but I want to qualify with that you can't change what God has done in my life. No, 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 no. And I think that's, that's the picture as Christians. We have to stretch ourselves that the same grace extended to you is the same grace extended to somebody else. Some of us are so judgmental and so pious and so arrogant that we tell folk who can't say nothing to you, who can't, who are you? You a sinner saved by grace too. You used to be nasty, foul, and I wish I could tell it all in here this morning, but it's 8 o'clock. Y'all ain't ready for that. We got a 11 o'clock service may get that with Sister Danielle. I don't know. Y'all ain't warmed up yet, but, but all of us up in here have not been the best of, and we thank God and praise God for him forgiving us, but we won't do it for no one else. So he starts to express this word called grace. And in this grace, he says, listen, I acknowledge that what you say may have some truth. I realize in normal circumstances that I would be disqualified. However, I came a different way. See, because I didn't walk with Jesus on the shores of Galilee. I, I wasn't on the, the waters when he, he calmed the rage and sea. I, I wasn't with him on the mountaintop when he turned himself inside out with Peter, James, and John. I came a different kind of way. And in spite of my experiences, I am what I am. It doesn't matter how your degrees and your circumstances and your training went. God brought me a different way. And in spite of you accepting me or not by the grace of God, I am what I am. And I pray someone here today embraces that and keep in mind that whatever you're struggling with and your own issues about how you're dealing with the things you have made mistakes about or you haven't forgiven yourself or asked forgiveness of other people, still keep in mind the truth is the grace of God extends beyond your complexes. And every time you get stuck in those places, remind yourself, but... By the grace of God, you at this moment, you at this season, you're here for this message for you to keep in mind it's bigger than you. It's beyond you. It's out of control. This is still beyond you. God's destiny for your life is that he extended grace for where you messed up at. Grace for you gave up on yourself at grace for where you want to quit at. He gave grace, but 
by the grace of God. Three graces in this one passage. And I'm not going to hold you long. Number one, he talks about a grace that saves. Now, 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 now some people ain't warmed up yet. B -b because you don't know how, how much salvation is needed. See, see, many people don't think they need to be saved. Many people don't know what they've been saved from. Many people don't know the penalty of sin and the price that's paid for sin. So they can't celebrate being saved. But is there anybody here that can remember when? And then know when he saved you from where you are. And while you celebrate today, I know I'm saved. I know I'm changed. I know I'm not what I used to be. I've been changed. The angels in heaven has signed my name. I, I glorify God today because uh, at, at, at the worst, that every time we have a reflection of being our old us, it reminds me, but I'm saved. Yeah, yeah, I may have an inkling, I may have an itch, I may have a desire, but I'm saved. And, and being saved pulls me from that old nature because a change has happened in my life. Paul says, I'm a changed man. I'm a forgiven man. I'm a cleansed man. I'm a loving man. I I've been born again. The change has happened in my life because of grace. He speaks about change in his life. He, he understands that grace, brothers and sisters, is necessary for each believer. And without it, none of us would be saved. But not only he speak about this grace, which is a kindness of what God has extended to us as being one of his representatives. But also he speaks about a grace, brothers and sisters, that speaks beyond who we are. Because this grace is not to prove none to you. This grace is, is, is to bring forth results because in order for me to be who I am, I need God to be. See, that, that's, why, that's why it's so important that we don't get caught up on our gifts and our abilities because we override God's grace with acting and not worship. Now, in order for me to be successful and to be who I am, it's the active power of God in my life because without him, I'm empty. So I need to be filled with God in order for me to be my best, not to celebrate me. I'm talking to you, but you ain't saying amen. Too many of us are trying to get his glory because you think you doing it. You think you're needed. You think someone has to put you in place. But listen, mess around and die tomorrow. They're going to send a card, some flowers, and a representative, and your job's going to be posted for somebody else to take it. Don't think so high yourself that you feel that there can't nobody do a better job than you. No, humble yourself. It's by the grace of He says you got to be mindful about this grace. So he goes on to say, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me was not in vain the grace that God has given you is not for you to abuse it's not for you to disregard it's a grace for you to acknowledge that he could have given it to someone else but he gave it to you and if you can acknowledge the grace of God he's given you you ought to do something with it I'm going somewhere Y'all can get to Sunday school on time today, but help me preach my sermon. The grace that God has given me and bestowed upon me in spite of whatever anyone else think about me, it's not bestowed upon me for me to sit on my nothing and to do nothing with it. I was sitting in the room uh, yesterday and, and uh, Isaac was going over his lyrics and we sitting there talking and you know, he getting himself together and he getting ready. His first solo. Good job, son. Good job. 
And so we're going over the song, and I'm telling him, listen, you use your diaphragm, and, uh, you know, project your voice, and, you know, you know, the song is with rhythm and beat. You got to find yourself in this space and learn how to add. I'm doing all that good talk, right? And I turned to Trey, and I said, man, why you ain't in the choir? I don't know. So what do you mean, oh, no? He said, you know, folks, they wish they can sing. God's giving you a gift, and you don't know why you're not using your gift to glorify God? I said, you, you one of the best singers in the house, whatever. You on videos and TikTok and everything else. Why you ain't singing? And I thought about it because many of us don't know the grace on our life. It's bestowed upon you. He couldn't have given it to someone else. He gave it to you and you sitting here playing video games. Who am I talking to in the room that got grace on your life? Blessed, gifted, and talented, but you sitting on it, won't use it, won't, don't want to perform, don't want to project yourself, don't want to do anything better. Who in here got grace on your life and you're sitting on it? Paul says grace is not in vain. It's given to you for a purpose. So not only is it the saving grace, it's this gift of grace and then it's this performing grace. He, he goes on in the same text. And he says, but I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. See, whatever we do, brothers and sisters, which is accomplished in our life, if it's done to glorify God, he enables you to get it done. That's what anointing is. Anointing is the gifting of God to perform the works of God for God. See, many of us can move the crowd, but you ain't anointed. Many of us are celebrated because of our ability to speak, but they ain't anointing. Many of us can raise money and get things done, but that's not anointing. God gives anointing for the purpose of him through you. He says, for that reason, because I acknowledge my saving grace. I acknowledge this kindness given to me, bestowed upon me in grace. For this reason, I allow the grace of God to operate in my life to glorify God with it. I'm going to get out your way, but he says the grace of God, which was with me. He acknowledges I need grace to serve. I need grace to accomplish. I need grace to show up in my life because Jesus didn't die for nothing. And so I'm going to give myself, enlist myself, and I'm going to stand up for Christ so he can be glorified for his sacrifice. So not only did he give me grace, he extended this grace for somebody else. And there's someone else here in the room today that must take this to heart. And keep in mind that grace is not given for you to celebrate you. Grace should be a marker in your life to humble you. It should make you humble when folks ask you to pray for them. It should make you humble when people ask you to be on the program. It should be, it should be something that humbles you. That the family union, they, they let you say grace over the meal. It, it, it should be humbling. That when you're at the bedside of a sick, when they tell you to lead them in prayer, it should be humbling that someone acknowledges that's grace on your life. And every time grace show up, it should remind you just how good God really is. Paul says, for this reason, I'm working for him. For this reason, you ain't going to out-hustle me. For this reason, you, you ain't going to out-preach me. For this reason, you're not going to outwalk me. For, for this reason, you're not going to outsing me. For this reason, you're not going to outpray me. For this reason, I'm going to give God glory and work for him. These graces in this one passage should keep all of us on fire for him. Number one, because he saved you. Just on yesterday, laid to rest, Pastor Demetrius Brown, Detroit, Michigan, friend and brother, fellow, uh, uh, former police officer, used to preach revivals from all the above, 52 years old, just slept on away. Children, wife, still shattered by, he was here yesterday. And here we bury him today. 
And many of us take for granted. You're not young as you used to be. You're not healthy as you used to be. There's markers on our life of time. And if we acknowledge the grace of God in our life, he saved you. There's some people here take for granted what's going on. Although we're struggling through life circumstances, God still extends grace to keep you. How many people know how, how blessed you are to be kept? He bestowed that upon you. And some people don't know how good they got it. And take grace for granted. But for those of us who not only thank God for saving grace and bestowing grace. You are thank God for active grace. And that whatever you do for him you can't fail. Because God is with you. I wish I had a witness here. I wish someone would keep on working for him because his grace is with you. Keep on fighting for your family because his grace is with you. Keep fighting for your family and your marriage because grace is with you. Keep on working and doing the right thing on the job because grace is with you. And so this gospel doesn't leave us barren although we struggle with our humanity. But it should keep you humble because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. No matter what you say, I am what I am. Door of the church is open. Door of the church is open. Door of the church is open. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Each person in this room should be stretching, growing, praying to become more like him. But we're on our own tracks, different experiences and paths. We're headed to the same place by point of destination. So don't, don't, don't make it small of your trials and tests. Because your struggles, your challenges and your tests are designed for a testimony. And so because of our tests, our trials, our challenges, be it if we pass or fail, we disqualify ourselves. What Paul says is you can't disqualify me because God qualified me. That's what he says. I know you would rather have a different pastor, but I am what I am. I know you would rather have a better teacher, but I am what I am. And so when you embrace who God has made you, you don't make excuses for not being somebody else. God's power and uniqueness is wrapped up in who you are. Whenever you hush your voice and you lead this world, others will come to testify that you were unique. Your voice, your laugh, your quirks, your jokes, your humor, whatever it is, because you are who you are. And if people can celebrate you in death, I want you to see who you are in life. Embrace it. I'm not a mistake. It happened to me, but it's not me. It's part of the test for me to give the testimony. And the power of what God has done in your life through your challenges he says it's through your testimony and the blood of the lamb and you must embrace salvation and your testimony if you're here today we want to extend you discipleship to come to Jesus just as you are weary wounded and sad whatever your case and condition is God has grace for you whoever's watching online who's sitting there contemplating what has been said today, you need to know God has grace for that. That whatever people say does not define you, although it hurts you. People say sticks and stones may break your bones, but words never hurt you. That's a lie. Uh, but
but God has grace for that and he's extending that grace for you to receive it and go on the old saints will say I'm gonna go on and see what the end gonna be I want to send that grace to you today if you're watching online be it on social media be it through our website be it through text remind uh, someone that you want to be part of this ministry this time you want to be saved respond so we can make sure we can walk with you and extend this grace to you that you will forever know that I am what I am by the grace of God and I will work to reach for perfection because he chose to bestow this grace on me is that one here today is that one let's give God praise for his grace let's give God worship for his grace let's give God praise for his grace hallelujah 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 your grace and mercy it brought me through I'm living this moment because of you I want to thank you and praise you too because of his grace and mercy Father God we thank you right now for this moment you allow for us to share in this word that we will see the grace of God in our life through salvation through your kindness and through the enablement to serve continue to humble us that we can extend the same grace to someone else that they may come to know you for themselves because of your grace because you don't have a respect of person what you've done for one you will do for another I pray Lord God we can, can embrace who we are and align ourselves to shine a light for someone else to see this same grace can operate in life through the Lord Jesus Christ allow us to share how much he loved us and that he died for our sins and rose for our justification while we were yet sinners he died in our place that we would be extended these levels of grace open our eyes to see open our hearts to see that you have given us grace thank you Lord God for each person present thank you for each family represented Thank you for each person that's watching, attending. They may look in their life and turn to serve you because of what you have done for us, because of what you're doing in us to give you the glory. Bless us now as we leave this place, but never from our presence. In the name of Jesus, all those who believe, said amen. amen. God bless you. Shake your neighbor hand. Show some love. Give God a praise and we see you next week.